Next week on Thursday, Chapter 29, Gloria Knows. What happened, Norma? My head felt light. He had at least a year left. He wasn't feeling well and Gloria took him to the hospital, the bookkeeper replied. He just slipped away peacefully. Gloria phoned everyone who was close to him. They were all at his side when he passed. Not everyone. Ten minutes after he died, she called me and said, What about Selena? She told me to inform you. She waited till after he died. I didn't get to say goodbye, I said somberly. I didn't either, Norma countered. But you don't understand. He was my best friend. The veneer cracked. I broke into sobs. David would have driven me to the hospital. Is your husband with you? She was concerned. Yes, yes, he is. I choked back the tears. What are the funeral arrangements? The funeral will be at Ephraim's on Main Street. You can call tomorrow. Or do you want me to call you with the details? Please call me, Norma. The receiver hit the cradle and the dam burst. My teeth chattered and I shook like a leaf. My stomach began to churn. The wail escaped like a howling banshee. David held me silently and stroked my hair while I rested against his chest. The steady pound of his heart against my ear reminded me of the heart that would never beat again. My body felt as if it could not contain the burden of sorrow this moment had thrust upon it. I didn't sleep much that night. My slumber, when I finally dropped off, was saturated with fragmented dreams of a crooked smile I would never see again and a frail hand reaching for comfort. The wide-eyed hours in the dark were chaotic with shifting memories of jokes, laughter, and the last awful visit. You are my best friend, he mouthed every time I closed my eyes. I told Gloria, so she knows. You are my best friend. I whispered back, my eyes flying open. Best friend, my best friend, you are my best friend. Gloria knows, Gloria knows. I was chagrined to realise I didn't have a single photograph of my friend. I think I intended to take a picture while he sat on the couch in the family room downstairs. The day we ret returned from a traumatic morning in court many months ago. I kicked myself for not remembering to do it. I cried all through the worship in church on Sunday morning. The words and the singing tore at my heart. The older twin tapped my arm. Are you okay, ma'am? I'm sad, I murmured. I'm sad about Mr. Wiseman. My daughter wound her arms around me and snuggled close. I walked into the pastor's office directly after service. Pastor Jim was ready to facilitate a parents' meeting. The words tumbled out of me. Pastor Jim, I said, I lost my best friend last night. Pastor Jim is a reserved man. He skirted his desk with extended arms and put them stiffly around me. The awkward gesture meant a lot. It was my lawyer, Mr. Wiseman. You liked him? My pastor was taken aback. David stood behind me. I loved him, Pastor Jim. The reverend gentleman was at a loss for an appropriate response. He was different, really. The answering machine was flashing when we got home. Norma's voice floated into the room. Selena, the funeral will be held tomorrow at Ephraim's Park Memorial Chapel at 3 p.m. The recorded words aroused no reaction. I had retreated into a space of dull numbness, 
the grief tightly bottled and sealed inside. I signed onto my email. I hadn't done so for two days. I didn't expect to find any message of farewell. I wasn't disappointed. I had a strong sense as I sat in my bedside chair in the pre-dawn bloom of Monday morning that I should prepare a bowl of Harold's favourite mango mousse and take it to the wise men home. I recoiled. No more humiliation, thanks. Then the thought flashed unbidden. David can deliver it. I went out in the morning to purchase the ingredients. On my way home, an urgent compelling drove me to purchase a card to accompany the dessert. I fingered rows of sympathy cards in a long, many-tiered display rack. The wording in the ones I reached for left me cold. I stretched to pull out a card all but hidden behind several others. A shiver shot through me as I held it in my hand. Footprints. I had never seen a card with the beautiful poem in its entirety. One night, a man dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord as the scenes of his life flashed before him. A fragile finger of warmth seeped into my frozen heart and spread through my body, causing an inexplicable tingle in my extremities. I remembered the wee hours of last Saturday morning when the lines of this very poem reverberated in my head. I had been prepared that morning for the loss of my friend. This was the card I must send his wife. A thought continued to gnaw at me. How did Harold die? Did he do away with himself? A second thought oozed like poison all over my lacerated spirits. She didn't let me say goodbye. She waited till after he died. To be continued.